me. All right, so we are back with another episode and I have a special guest. I am super, super excited about this. Um, so I'm gonna introduce Arian. And is that how you pronounce your name, Arian? Yes, Arian. Okay, Arian, um, Arian Hargrove is a business strategist who's helped Fortune 500 companies save millions of dollars to their bottom line while driving continuous improvement in their operations and customer service experience. Creating across the board consistency is critical to successful business. Ms. Hargrove is the, in the business of helping other women-owned businesses scale their business and empower their team, which equals a business that runs without them with maximum success. Propelling businesses to their next level of success is a large part of um, her style of business training. Uh, Arian Hargrove is more than a coach and consultant. She's a business identity designer. Her distinct touch will make the personalities of business and business owners resonate with potential clients and customers. Leading the helm of her success, operation, and excellence has always been her unwavering focus. That very passion is what led Arian to build her own company, Love for Systems, LLC, so she can make an even greater impact in the world. That impact has now coined her Your Systems Queen. Her motto is drive costs down, profits up. The customer experience should be always top priority. So, Arianne, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so there's always a story behind um, how people get here, and um, I want you to lead with that post that went viral in the Facebook group that said, you saved a company X amount of dollars, and then they cut your position, which was blank. So start off with that. Tell us about your story. Oh, yes. So the story starts out with how I saved a company, a Fortune 500 company, over $50 million for them to then cut back a position that was $150,000 per year. So um, leading up to that, you know, there was a lot of go things going on there in the industry. Um, there was also a lot of things going on with myself, too, because I was kind of toiling back and forth about wanting to do this business full time. And so um, working real hard, never having time to focus on me because all my focus was on the company that I was working for and putting all my time and energy there. So having that situation occur and i also look at it as an opportunity or even a blessing because had that not happened i probably would not have started my business at least not full time and there would have always been an excuse of well i can't do this i can't do that i'm traveling here i'm traveling there so i don't have enough time to meet with any clients so since then it's been a huge blessing probably within the first after getting let go after that probably within the first 90 days i signed my first client because I had already put my own processes and systems in place anticipating that day and not really ready for it because I was like oh yeah I'm, I'm comfortable here let me not um, do anything yet on my own because I knew there was a conflict so had I started promoting my business while still working for that fortune 500 there would have been a conflict of interest and I'm sure if I had disclosed that information then they probably would have let me go for that too <laughs> so, oh, wow. um, you know, it was just a matter of God putting his hands in it and saying, hey, it's time. Um, it's time for you to get out of your comfort zone and get into this other comfort zone, which is now helping businesses, small businesses and entrepreneurs do the same thing that I helped Fortune 500 companies do. So tell me more about that. Let's talk about time frames because, you know, a lot of people might have an idea or a business idea and they're thinking about it and then 10 years goes by and they don't do anything about it, and they're still just thinking about it. So when did you first start thinking about starting your own business? January 2017. <laughs> oh, that's very specific. I have, yeah, I have to know that date because of um, pursuing certifications. So they always ask you how long you've been in business, and then some certifications you have to be in business at least two years. Okay. So that's why that, that date is ingrained in me. Um, and so that just goes to show... Um, this is now 2020, but this situation at the Fortune 500 company happened early 2019. Mm. So I literally had already started the business, you know, went through the legal aspect of it, getting the paperwork together, um, doing the incorporation paperwork um, that we have to do here in Michigan. And then slowly but surely making sure I had stuff in place because I'm like, you know, I, my vision was to be big and global. So I wanted to make sure that I had what I needed in place to be able to operate like another global company or even like a Fortune 500 company. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was January 2017. So two years and counting now. <laughs> so from the idea to have to start your own business in 2017 and you were let go in 2019. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. Awesome. So and then not exactly two years, pretty much two years and a month. Okay. And then 90 days from that date and what date in 2019? So that happened in February. So in February of 2019. Okay. I had my first client. Wow. You had your first client in February. Wow. No, so in 90 days. So by early. So summer. 90 days. Mm-hmm. So 90 days from February. Yep. All right. So um, like right before the holiday in May, I'd have to go back. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. But um, within quick succession, you got your first client. So there are a lots of business owners too who you know decide to start their business and then it's a while before they get their first client. So what do you have to suggest or what do you owe to the fact that you were able to get your first client so quickly? Networking. Networking mm-hmm. is your net worth. And I know a lot of people say that and it's very true and very valid. Um, especially with social media now, what I did was I started posting about my offer. So once I posted about my offer, someone who I had never even thought would have been my client ended up being my client. Someone I knew, um, but I hadn't spoken to them in years. And they saw my post and they're like, I need you. And so I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) I was like, all right, let's do this. So um, you have to put yourself out there. And right now, in today's time, there's so much free stuff right now, social media, You know, there's so many avenues to promote without having to pay Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. You just have to know where your channel is. So for me, my clients are more on the larger scale. Not that I don't service entrepreneurs, but my platforms is Facebook and LinkedIn. I have Instagram and pretty much will be migrating over to LinkedIn more. So that's where most of my ideal clients, they reside on LinkedIn. So Mm -hmm. that's what I'll be promoting more over there soon. So there are also a lot of people who talk about their business and talk about their offer, but nobody's interested in it. Um, Mm -hmm. So how did you learn how to talk about your offer in a way that was attractive and appealing? What I do is I love what I do. So that's the difference too, um, to me, if a person doesn't come across passionate about it, like I literally talk about this stuff every day. And sometimes I get, <laughs> I get the frowns from my son. He's like, can you turn the hat off, please? Like I literally, when we're out at the store, I'm always looking at trying to help people improve their process, their business, whatever it is. Like even today for lunch, I was at a restaurant and I'm just sitting there watching how their operations could be improved. And it's just a matter of talking to people. And just that quick, I said to the lady, you know, hey, you know, how long have you guys been in business? You, you kind of ask some probing questions to kind of touch on some of their pain points that you can see. So for myself, I'm very observant and that's actually part of my process when I work with people in person or local businesses that I actually go on site and do like a, an audit or an assessment because as an outsider, we see things that the insiders don't because they're so intimate with it. So it's always helpful to bring in a set of eyes outside to come and see what's really going on. And I I just, for me, I hate chaos. (laughs) So uh, whenever I see something that's out of order or could be done better, my light bulb goes off instantly. So it's a little easier for me to talk about it because I love what I do. This Mm -hmm. is how I'm like, so I I couldn't see myself doing anything else. So that's why for me, it's a lot easier to approach people um, or ask some of those probing questions to find out, hey, what's going on? What are you struggling with? What's giving you heartache? Um, It's a lot more probing for questions that are in business, and it's a different type of questions for someone who wants to start up. So there, there are definitely two different scales when it comes to those type of questions. So listeners, what I would love for you to hear and take away from what um, Marian just said is that she shows interest in other people. She's curious. And um, a lot of us, a lot of my listeners are people in the healthcare industry, and we are, we've been trained to observe human conditions and see things that other people don't see. And so I really want my people who are listening to think about channeling that skill, that natural skill into the business world as you're talk, out there out and about talking to people, you know, listen to what they're going on. I mean, ask questions, be curious, you know, what's going on with you? You know, when they start to, you know, talk about something that's bothering, just ask more questions. And if you can't help them, um, you 
you there's probably somebody in your network who can help them and you know if you're unsure reach out to me because i probably know somebody that can help them or if not just send them to arian and let her figure that out um but i i love how you said that you had you know like a natural you're just a naturally so are you would you say you're a naturally observant person because that's you know also big bucks a lot of people will pay um, a consultant to come in because they just need an outside perspective. I've heard of like marketers who hire a mar marketing consultant because um, they just want an outside perspective of someone coming in and taking a look at what things are going on. So have you always been like naturally observant or tell me more about that? Um, it took me a while to realize that because I was like, no, this isn't, this isn't me. This isn't what I'm trying to do. Um, but I, I had to think about, so you know, if you've ever taken a class on finding your purpose, some of the questions that I think are good questions, they'll ask you questions on what did you want to do when you were young? And so when you go back and think about those things and you're like, you know what, I really did like to, because I was very hands-on and I'm still very hands-on, but I'm a quiet hands-on. So I don't have to be out in the forefront. I don't want to be out in the forefront. And that's where I feel like, you know, as I sit in the background and I watch everything that's going on and I observe and I, you know, pick out where to kind of interject and where not to. Um, I think for me, that's probably one of my strengths because I can just sit back and not say anything at all, but I'll be ready. I'll either be taking mental notes or I'll be taking notes to my phone. Mm -hmm. And I'll just, once that door opens to have that conversation, then all this stuff comes out. <laughs> and then, wow. you know, people are like, oh my goodness, okay, I never thought of that. So stuff that's obvious to me is not always obvious to everyone else and is actually not obvious to everyone else because this is the stuff that I look for versus what they would. Um, and listeners, I want you to hear what she said with that too. What's obvious for you is not obvious for everyone else. Now, um, for me, I, I love connections. I love seeing partnerships. Um, I have like a little bit of matchmaker in me and I found that my matchmaking ability is more appreciated in the business world than the personal lives of my friends. And so... <laughs> <laughs> when I connect people with, you know, podcasters or um, virtual summit hosts or speaking opportunities, um, they're like, why didn't I think of that? Of course they would, you know, like, a, I always say like a, like a photographer, you know, connecting them with a the wedding planner, cake baker, event planner, and caterer, a photographer needs to know like those people. That's obvious to me. Of course they need to know, you know, these people. However, the photographer doesn't necessarily know that or the elder care attorney um, attorney actually asked me like why would I need to talk to them I said um you you should collaborate with estate planners and real estate agents and she was like why and I was like don't you I mean it's so obvious but you know Erin you just said that you were able to see um systems and processes improvement needs for system and process improvement that other people just don't see so where did you start to um where did you like see that that was like a glaring need that you needed to address? And I asked that because a lot of my listeners, they see needs either in the healthcare system or um, at home or in their families or in their communities, they see a need, um, but then they just see a need. So when did you see something that was like glaring obvious that you, or maybe it was a series of things, you're like, you know what, I need to hang my shingle and start my thing. Mm -hmm. Two years ago. <laughs> okay. I actually, um, while working for this company, the Fortune 500, actually took a training class excuse me and um that's when the light bulbs just literally started just going off and popping because i'm like oh i love this oh i love this and it was actually a training class on helping go to the next level for what i do and i actually did this what i do for my business is what i was doing for the company so i've always seen it you know, since I've been an employee, so I've always been in this field over 20 years, <clears throat> excuse me, just from a different perspective. So being on the manufacturing side, for example, and then being on the corporate side, I've seen it from both sides. So this skill set there, and there's a ton of people out here, of course, that do it, and we all have our own special um, strength that we have. So technically, we all don't do the same thing you know, because everyone will focus, like, I literally focus on making sure you deliver that customer experience, where mm -hmm. someone else may focus on automation. I don't focus on automation first. That comes after what we need to do. <laughs> so um, it just, it seems like it's always been there. I didn't probably realize it until probably at least a good five or six years where I finally was like, okay, this is definitely what I'm supposed to be doing, because I actually tried to run away from it. And because I'm like, this can't be what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> but because I used to get so frustrated with it, because anytime mm -hmm. I would see an opportunity, 
And I would be like, why don't you want to fix this? And people would be like, I know what I'm doing. I got this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but it can be done so much better. So I used to just be like, well, maybe I have these high expectations that nobody else wants to have. Mm-hmm. And so now you'll see people, a lot of people talking about it. Um, a lot of people talking about streamlining and things of that sort. But this has been out for umpteen years. I mean, I've been doing this, like I said, for over 20 years. And this concept, this business model has always been around. It's just now migrating into all the other industries. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so there's lots of people who are also who in healthcare is a, experiencing a lot of shifts, a lot of changes. Um, a lot of people are, um, well, I, I, on, on Instagram, I post about it, hospital closures. And there's lots of people who find themselves, you know, suddenly without a position or their unit closes or restructures, or um, a lot of nurses are, you know, getting like the average age of a nurse is 55. And I've seen some people be forced to retire um, or put in positions where they have to quit. And when you're put in a position where your value is not being recognized, um, you said something about, um, you know, when they told you your position has been eliminated, you said something back to the person who told you that. <laughs> Do you remember what it is? Do you remind? I have it here if you want me. It's like they say your position has been eliminated and you responded that. I was like, no, it's not. Um, yeah. It's not being eliminated. And you're like, yes, it is. And then I said, no, it's not. It's just basically time for me to move on. Mm. But I know that wasn't exactly what I said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well... <laughs> Well, that's the version that we'll say here, but um, I, I like you had mentioned like in the um, Facebook group that, you know, your position with that company may have been eliminated, but your position in the world no has not been eliminated. And I want people to, to really hear that because, you know, it's, it's so easy to attach a job role with our personal identity, but just how important it is for us to have, you know, identity outside of our day job because, you know, anything can happen. And mm-hmm. so when I came across your story and I saw, you know, you know, what you did and how you, you know, turned it around and, you know, um, I just was like really inspired and I was like, you know, I have to interview her and hear a little bit more. And, um, and I, and I feel like it's like a whole backstory <laughs> too. It is. Because uh-huh. one of the things that I know we don't see a lot on social media, especially is the, the downside, right? Um, and trust me, <laughs> it wasn't an easy transition because especially when you've been working for so, so such a long time for someone else, you're in a habit. So that habit becomes just the way of nature for you. So you get up, you go to the job, you come home, you do whatever you do at home, and it starts over every single day. And so there was a transition. There's definitely a mind shift that has to happen. Um, there's definitely emotions that go up and down, up and down. (laughs) Um, I think that was probably part of why it took me a couple of months because I had to go through that. Um, So no, it wasn't an easy transition because of the fact that it was a surprise. Um, There was um, communication from the company that this was going to happen. You just didn't know who it was going to happen to. And so, you know, you always sit there and pray and things, hope it doesn't happen to you. You ask the questions, like for me, I have no problem asking, hey, am I going to be impacted? Because I have a family to take care of. So if I'm going to be impacted, let me know so I can start to do something else. Um, But because of that was not information that was privy or shared, it it was definitely unexpected. I went into work on a Monday, got let go on a Tuesday. So yeah, that was not expected at all. So um, immediately afterwards, I went and had breakfast (laughs) to just kind of decompress. But I knew to Monday night because my manager sent me an email invite, uh, which he probably wasn't supposed to. So that gave me some time to kind of process it too, but it still doesn't get fully processed until you go through it. And I had to go through it to get to where I am now. And so um, it definitely by no means was not an easy transition because that schedule of not getting up and leaving anymore has to be adjusted. Now, can you actually work at home or do you need to work outside the home? There's so many things that go on behind the scenes um, that a lot of people don't share that I think people have to keep in front of them too. Finances, um, things that your employer covered, like healthcare, 
you have to now keep that in mind because those are additional expenses. So those are the things too that I was looking at beforehand, just not ready to take that on because healthcare is not cheap. Mm -hmm. So um, there's those things that you have to keep in mind. Some of the stuff that I had already planned for though was like insurance, life insurance, um, home insurance, things like that, car insurance. I had those already taken care of and separate from what was offered at the company. So mm -hmm. Individuals who are looking to make that transition, I would say start planning for it now. Start putting your everything in order. You know what the company covers, so find out what you're going to have to cover because now that helps you also, and I know I'm getting off on a tangent, but that also helps you with pricing your products and services because once you realize how much you're going to have to come out of pocket for expenses, those are the things that are normally covered by a company. So that's the overhead that now you inherit. Mm -hmm. So. That's just my little tip <laughs> that I'll add on there. All right. Well, that's that's more than a little tip. Let's not <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah, it's more than a little tip. So, how can people continue to keep in touch with you and find out more of your quote little tips <laughs> and um, hear about what you're up to and what you have going on? So, I am on Facebook. Love for Systems, L O V E, number four Systems is my Facebook page. Same thing for Instagram, L O V E, the number four Systems, and then LinkedIn will be the same thing too. L-O-V-E, the number four in systems. And then okay. my website is www.love4systems.com. And one, actually the ending question, I just thought about it, like in a nutshell, um, when it comes to describing the problem that you solve, what problem do you solve for people? Like, what would you say some of the top, well, like you solve so many problems, I'm sure. <laughs> but like, what is like your favorite problem that you love to solve that you're like, oh, you guys have this going on wrong. Excellent. Oh, my favorite. I don't know if I have a favorite. Because um, to me, I love all <laughs> You love all the problems, and that's why you do what you do. I love it. That's good. When you mentioned healthcare, that was, that's definitely a big thorn in my side, because the healthcare um, industry. So, um, ooh. you know, one of the things now being self-employed that I get to experience more often is going to, like, appointments and things, and so the office how the office is operating. Mm. Uh, if I could just get into some of these businesses and help them at least organize and streamline their office settings mm -hmm. and how they operate there. And I mentioned healthcare because I had an appointment and I went into the hospital and I felt like their processes were so archaic. And I was like, you're a big healthcare mm. from here in the area. And I still have to manually write my name out and put a sticker on my shirt. <laughs> So, um, yeah. yeah, they're on my list to pr make proposal to. But oh, awesome. It's still, it's the yeah. simple things like that because that's the first step or the first mm -hmm. touch point where yes. customers will be with your business. So to me, it starts there when mm -hmm. your customers first come to you and then it works all the way through. But yeah, you'll still have a passion for manufacturing too, because that's okay. where I came from. Um, my background is industrial engineering is part of it and electrical. So okay. I still love looking at capacity planning and throughput. And um, we still have a lot of work to do there too. Okay. So, and that all translates over into how you operate in your day-to-day -day operations, no matter what. Yes. Sounds good. Well, um, maybe another episode we'll have, I have to convert you over into healthcare because goodness gracious. <laughs> goodness gracious um yeah we need healthcare industry like we like I think it's like research out there or statistics that say that we kind of like I think it's 10 years now behind the industry healthcare the business industry we just have like a 10-year lag and you know lots of reasons why I'm not you know that's not I don't really don't want to start talking about it but <laughs> lots of reasons why but um yeah that's something so you know, if anyone's listening and you're starting your own um, practice, I do have, you know, nurse practitioners and stuff that are listening to, and you're just wanting to make sure that your office flow is starting off correctly, because that can also impact your billing and um, lots of stuff that you don't necessarily expect if you're, you know, just, it would make, make sense to touch base with Arian and just to see what she's up to and how she might be able to help because, um, yes, that's a thing. So <laughs> thank you so much for um, joining me and um, I look forward to staying in touch. Awesome, awesome, thank you.